Well, various calls have intensified to have the public protector Busisiwe Mkwebani removed from her position. In the latest move, the Helen Susman Foundation has joined in the campaign. Lawyers representing the Helen Susan, Susman Foundation have written to the Speaker of the National Assembly, Tandi Modise, to demand for Advocate Mkwebani's removal. Now, for the latest, let's get more on the story. And we joined via Skype by the Helen Susman Foundation Director, Anton van Dalsen. Uh, and so thank you very much indeed for coming through. Let's just firstly confirm that you have indeed written this letter uh, to the, uh, the speaker. Yes, indeed. Good morning. Um, we sent the letter yesterday and this follows the Constitutional Court's judgment on Monday uh, where they found that the public protector uh, is responsible to pay 15 percent of the costs of that particular case out of her own pocket because of the fact that she had been acting in a in bad faith and in a grossly unreasonable manner. Let's just look at the reasoning behind this now. And look, she did lose that case in terms of the Constitutional Court asking her to pay that portion of 15% in terms of the cost. Uh, she is, we're told reportedly, that going to appeal the Frieda uh, judgment. So that's in the pipeline. Her supporters will argue that this is a bit premature. What's your response to that? I don't think so. Um, you know, the, the courts are very, very careful before they make it, um, a, uh, an, a judgment or they uh, come out with a judgment in which they make a public office holder pay any of the costs. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, this is only the second time it has happened. The first one was on Batabili Lamini when she was Minister of Social Security. So I think from that you can see how serious this matter is. Yeah. and. The post of public protector is an extremely important one, and we find it's absolutely unacceptable that somebody who has acted in this manner continues in that post. Mm. Look, no doubt the constitutional justices use some strong language when delivering that judgment. Yet, th then again, I, I go back to some of uh, the, her supporters, Advocate Mkwebani supporters, saying that you know, subsequent to the 2016 constitutional ruling, which said that the public protectors of remedial uh, findings are, are binding, you had the spike of, of review cases. And if I remember correctly, before she took office, there was already about 16 cases pending there. So is it all relative? No, it's not. I think the important thing to realize is that the uh, findings of the public protector are not absolutely binding. They are binding as long as they are lawful. So in other words, if they have not been re reviewed by a court, they will be binding. Uh, yeah. And But you cannot say that they are binding uh, full stop. If they are unlawful and the conclusions have been reached, in a manner which are unlaw in a manner which is unlawful, then they are not binding. Mm -hmm. Look, when I when I look at the constitution, in particular uh, section one nine four uh, of the constitution, which talks to the removal of office of uh, the public protector, for instance, as well as the auditor general, and some of the stipulations is that they can only be removed on the grounds of misconduct, incapacity, or incompetence. Now, from your understanding. How do you prove incompetence? I think in this particular case, uh, and let's just move beyond the, the uh, bad faith and the un grossly unreasonable conduct. This was a case in which the um, Reserve Bank and APSA took the public protector to court uh, on the back of a report which the public protector had issued, uh, which said not only that APSA should repay certain monies, um, but that the uh, constitutional mandate of the Reserve Bank should also be changed. Mm. Now, she obviously did not understand the facts of the case because it was clear that APSA uh, did not unlawfully receive any money. They paid full value for the specific entity, and the people who were actually responsible for repaying any money were policyholders of Sunlum, which was still a mutual um, company at that stage, and it was absolutely impossible to try and decipher which of the policy owners owned or owed how much to the Reserve Bank. Mm. And secondly, 
she did not realize that it is not within her functions or her powers to order a change of the constitution in respect of the Reserve Bank. So quite apart from the bad faith and the grossly unreasonable conduct, she did not understand the facts of the case mm. and she did not understand the, her, what she could do in terms of the constitution. So it goes beyond just bad faith and unreasonableness. It goes down to actually not understanding what she was doing. If Anton, it does get to the National Assembly. In terms of the rules, is there an unconstitutional gap there? Are the rules adequate in terms of this process? Well, uh, I think it's clear the National Assembly can um, agree on whatever rules they, they want for a specific process. So I don't think the fact that there aren't any formal rules for anything of this kind should should stop the process. It's not a complicated uh, affair to, to agree on uh, elementary rules for uh, how the process should run. Mm. Um, and uh, simply because there aren't any formalized rules right now, does not mean that they can't be set up in short, uh, short notice. Well, it requires two-thirds of the members of the National Assembly to actually vote on this. Do you think currently in this uh, environment there's political will? It's a very good question. Um, obviously, without the, uh, majority, without the ANC voting in favour of a motion like this, it won't be carried. Uh, but I think the, the issue to remember there is that the office of the, the public protector has lost, uh, as far as we can see, practically all credibility. And the parties in Parliament, therefore, have to think about uh, whether they uh, do not proceed with the proceedings in Parliament to remove her from office and mm. what effect that will have on their own credibility. All right. Uh, let's leave it there. Helen Sisman Foundation Director Anton van Dalton, we thank you very much indeed for coming through.